what is up guys, it's me Zach Lee. Thank you for joining me back on that quest to 200k hashtag a million a year. You guys already know that you are the real MVP. NBA All-Star voting is going on right now, just in case you didn't know already. And for the most part, we can all predict which players are going to make the All-Star team. And there are going to be a lot of snubs in the Western Conference and a lot of players who will make the All-Star team for the first time in the Eastern Conference. So it's going to be cool to see. And then of course there's the all-star draft first year the NBA has done this new draft system real quick though on that note NBA if you are listening let us the fans watch the draft that's all we ask right now the NBA has said that they're leaning towards making it a private behind closed doors draft that we don't get to see but like what on earth is the point of that why would you do that with all due respect that's a dumb idea most of the fun for us fans is gonna come from watching the draft seeing what player gets picked first last seeing the players react to what team they get picked by. If you take that away from us, it'll just feel like a regular all-star game. Let us see it. Anyways though, like I was saying, for the most part, we still know what players are going to be playing in the all-star game. However, every year there is a movement started by fans to get a player that might not be the most deserving to make the all-star team onto the all-star team. For the past couple of years, of course, has been Zaza Pachulia. And I'm sure he will most likely get a bunch of votes this year as well. Now there is another movement going on for a different NBA player. And that player has come out of nowhere this year. Spencer Dinwiddie. Before this year started, you would have to be a hardcore NBA a fan or have had to have had the pleasure of seeing Spencer Dinwiddie suit up for your favorite team in order to know who he was at all. And even right now, it's not like he is the most popular NBA player. See, he is supposed to be the backup point guard for the Brooklyn Nets, but because of their injuries to D'Angelo Russell and Jeremy Lin, he has been starting for them. And I will say that he's been doing a pretty good job at it. Uh, on the season, he's putting up a respectable 13 points and six and a half assists per game. Like I said, it's respectable, but that's about it. However, I will say that you do not want to play against Spencer Dinwiddie on a Saturday. I don't think the NBA can handle Dinwiddie on a Saturday. On Saturday, he averages just under 19 points and nine assists per game. So if they move the All-Star game to Saturday instead of Sunday, you might play like an All-Star. This is the guy this year that NBA fans are bent on getting to the All-Star game. How this started, why it started, no one knows. The amount of support that he has been getting though has been unreal. There was a day where he received twice as many votes as James Harden. Spencer Dinwiddie got twice as many votes as James Harden. Supposedly the front runner to win MVP this year is getting outvoted by Spencer Dinwiddie. Even Spencer Dinwiddie himself took to Twitter to talk about how grateful and how unexpected all this support has been. Now no official numbers have been released by the NBA in terms of who is getting the most votes by fans so far, but when they are, don't be surprised to see Dinwiddie's name way up there. All that aside though, sadly it will be impossible for him to actually make the all-star team because of the Zaza Pachulia rule. Allowing NBA players and media votes to account for 50% of the vote. It is pretty much impossible unless the players and media also want to see Dinwiddie in the All-Star game. Speaking of All-Stars though, Anthony Bennett is reportedly being eyed by Brad Stevens. Pause. Since the Celtics D-League team that they own traded for him. That's crazy, man. A former number one draft pick being traded by D-League teams. You got a number one draft pick out there that D-League teams say isn't even worth a spot on their roster. What this actually means that Brad Stevens is keeping an eye on him, no one knows, it could mean nothing at all. But I will say this, if there comes a time where for some unforeseeable reason, the Celtics feel like they need to sign Anthony Bennett. And then something miraculous happens and he blossoms into the player that no one ever thought he could be. I think we as fans have to acknowledge Brad Stevens as the best coach ever. And I'm not just talking about basketball, I'm talking about the best coach ever. Period. The Oklahoma City Thunder lost to the Dallas Mavericks last night 116-113, to their second straight loss after winning six straight games. And you can't say after one bad loss they have gone back to their old ways because they haven't. The offense of the OKC Thunder, which is what they were struggling with all year long, wasn't bad last night. They used to struggle to score 100 points, so them scoring 113 isn't bad. Melo, George, and Westbrook all played really well, especially Westbrook, at least on the offensive end. It was just 
the defense of the Thunder that took a step back. One of the best defensive teams in the NBA. They shouldn't allow the Dallas Mavericks to drop 116 points on them. Granted, this was Dallas's fourth straight win, so props to them for that. And Carmelo Anthony after the game, even though the Thunder lost, gave OKC fans a reason to smile, I think, as he let them know that they have began to figure things out on the offensive end. The offense came a long way. It was coming a long way. Uh, that's something that we, I think we, we figured out. Uh, something we, we, we will continue to work on. Uh, even though our offense is moving in the right direction, we can't allow our, our defense to slip. You know, we, we are one of the top defensive teams in, in the NBA, so we want to keep that level uh, of intensity out there, that focus. Uh, at the same time, as our offense is, you know, making strides and moving to the right direction. It's exactly what Melo said. They just need to make sure that they keep doing what they're doing on the offensive and getting better on top of that and still bring the same defensive intensity that they have had earlier in this season. And despite what all you guys might say, what I might say, whatever jokes are being said about Andre Roberson on the offensive end, you have to acknowledge he is one of the best defenders in the NBA and he wasn't playing yesterday, so I'm sure they missed him. The Rockets snapped their, what was it, four or five game losing streak? Yeah, they snapped it, but I know Rockets fans were sweating bullets the entire time as it took double overtime to dispatch of the depleted Los Angeles Lakers. LA was down three starters yesterday, and on top of that, three of their players that they started yesterday fouled out, including Julius Randle, who was their best player. I think he just boosted his trade value by a lot with his performance, 29 points, 15 rebounds, 6 assists, he showed what everyone thought he could be when he was drafted. And the Lakers might have been depleted, but maybe this game didn't even need to go into overtime had it not been for James Harden having to leave the game with a strained hamstring with 4 minutes to go in the 4th quarter. Harden had 40 points at 11 assists before he left, and after he left, Chris Paul took over carrying Houston in the double overtime period and clinched the game with a couple of clutch free throws down the stretch. He finished with 28 points and 10 assists. Reports have it that the Suns are preparing to offer Devin Booker a five-year, $156 million contract extension. They are really trying to make sure he never even thinks about leaving them. And with that kind of money on the table, I don't think he will think about it once they officially offer it to him. Anyways, though, the Suns lost to the Sixers, 123-110. to This win, though, came at a price, as Joel Embiid hurt his hand late in the fourth quarter. He did stay in the game after that and the Sixers apparently did some tests said it wasn't broken and that it was most likely a sprain now do I actually trust what they were saying and that it is a sprain of course not because it's the Sixers they lie about this stuff before but the fact that he didn't leave the game right away at least kind of verifies that it wasn't a broken hand because I can't imagine Joel Embiid being able to stay in the game and play with a broken hand the Wizards escaped from the Bulls Barely. They took a fourth quarter rally and Bradley Beal playing outside of his mind, but they did it. 114 to 110. Beal, though, a near triple double. 39 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. He is one of the players that will be making his first All Star appearance this year, and it will be well deserved. The Pacers without Victor Oladipo are what we thought they were going to be to start the season. Bad. This is just speak to how great of a player Depot has been because without him, they haven't been able to win a game. They lost again to the Timberwolves 107 to 90, and this game was more of a blow than it seems. The Pacers were just playing for pride and to close the gap between the scores down the stretch, but Minnesota probably could have 30 balled them if they wanted to last night. Butler with 26 points and Towns with 18 points. 14 rebounds and 6 blocks. I can see a lot of teams trying to trade for Lou Williams before their trade deadline. Do you all realize that this guy is putting up 21 points per game? With all the injuries that the Clippers have had, someone had to score and he has been doing it. He has also had multiple 40 point games so far this year. Score! That's literally all this guy is. He gets buckets and does nothing else and some teams could for sure use that coming off their bench. He got the Clippers to win over the Hornets yesterday 106 to 98 and like I said I can see teams trying very hard to trade for him as the trade deadline approaches but with the Clippers being as stubborn as they are I can't see them trading him and by the way it's still hashtag free Kemba. The Grizzlies beat the Kings. Hooray. And yet the Kings are still higher in the standings than Memphis. 
That's actually all I gotta say about this game. That wraps up everything that happened in the NBA from yesterday, though. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by clicking this little card right here. Just remember, though, the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys selected Stephen Curry and his 38 points, including 10 made triples as your player of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to smack that like button as well as subscribe to the channel to join the quest to hashtag a million and a year in to stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. But until tomorrow, keep getting the bucks, Team STC, and I'm out of here.